Hello and welcome everybody uh, to the r Free Art School Discord uh, Redline and Critique stream. Uh, today we'll be looking at a number of pieces uh, and I will be critiquing and redlining them on video. Uh, I think uh, the the idea occurred to me that this might be useful to people. We we've done a red line and uh, and critiquing stream before, back when I was doing this in the evenings when more of you were available. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm only available in the mornings right now. But we'll go ahead and uh, and move on with these with these pieces. Uh, and the first artist that I received stuff from, I will be doing this in order of. Uh, where I got the where I got the pieces from and I advised people to send those to me uh, via discord DM alright first person who got back to me I'll go ahead and make sure I get their name down Director 240. Alright, I got a couple of pieces from, from this artist. Uh, and we'll go ahead and switch over to the critiquing and the redlining. Alright, here uh, it seems we have uh, a piece. There's a bisection. Uh, two characters. So there's kind of a, a mirror imagery here. Um, so I'm presuming it's supposed to be uh, a reflection, perhaps, or uh, kind of like a playing card, maybe, where you've got like an upper an upper side being at least roughly symmetrical to the lower side. So, and we've got a divide right about there, which is fine. Um, my that uh, that would be one of my dis. Um, critiques is that like you could better delineate this or, or make it clearer as to what it was supposed to be whereas like if it's supposed to be a, a, a playing card of some sort you get like a, a a suit and a number or whatever that, that might not be what you were going for here but that's that's kind of what it reminds me of so if it, whereas if it's a, a reflection in something it can be a little a little clearer um, but yeah, and so it looks like on the upper side here, well, autosave. Thanks for saving me, autosave. I didn't necessarily need it right away, but here we are. All right, so with this character, I'm interpreting this character as more like a canine. Um, it's got a, like, kind of a cartoonishly big nose. Uh, it's kind of a, a boxy-looking snout. Which is fine, if that's what you were going for. Uh, and it also looks like... The, the appearance makes it look like their snout's uh, bigger on one end and smaller as it goes towards the face, which, which can be an interesting stylistic choice. Um, but yeah, so like, but that's, uh, that's opposite of what, how a normal muzzle looks. Normal muzzles are going to be small, and they'll get bigger as they go back towards the face. But provided you weren't going for that, which is how I think it, I'm not sure you were, it's, it's kind of a very stylized look, so I'm presuming it was deliberate. Uh couple couple of different things here um, you've got some kind of inconsistency in your shading here um, where there are some lines that that are very sharp and there are other lines that, that fade out and real shadows do do that um, in in certain circumstances uh, but in this case where you've got uh, a very cartoony look this kind of um, fading out shadows uh, it takes it takes some work to really get it looking like, and so these places where you have the nice hard line of shadows, I think, really complement the rest of the uh, 
kind of uh, cartoony, maybe comic booky uh, style that you were going for here. But uh, but yeah, so that's that's one area. Uh, as far as some areas of like uh, uh, anatomy go, uh, it appears there appears to be some confusion around the hand, palm, and perhaps the wrist areas as well. Those are very important joints to to get correct. Uh, but if I were doing them, you want to make sure that you define clearly uh, where where your hand is. And so right now it's it's kind of blobby. Uh, and then over here, over here you've got a uh, kind of a better setup, but we're we still don't have kind of quite a definitive uh, shape on the palm. And so we've got uh, we've got a thernier. Yeah, let me go a little bit smaller here. Let me get in a little bit closer to this hand specifically. Turn a little bit of smoothing on so it's not completely. There we go. So we got the the thernier eminence of the of the thumb, uh, and then to build up your your hand, uh, you want to line out where the rest of that form is, and so. Uh, it might be facing the the viewer directly, which uh, which can which is a which is a valid choice. Uh, but yeah, if you've built out the palm, you kind of want to show some uh, some some depth to it because even the fingers are the fingers over here are overlapping each other slightly, uh, but they're not making any. Uh, significant like uh, changes in or, or or overlaps or something like that uh, and so one way you can add some depth hit there is by uh, emphasizing the 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 wrinkles in the hand because it's not just the fingers going into the palm uh, that the area there depending on the angle that you're approaching it from the area there kind of uh, splits you know so as a, if you're if you're looking at a real ha hand uh, lines go out, so um, definitely get some get some reference as to as to where you're you're going there, uh, as to what exactly hand position that you want. So if I'm like looking at my own hand in a in a position like that, um, and people's bodies are going to be different, but typically the thernier eminence is um, is going to be a part of the palm, and like right here it looks like it's a bit separate from it, and we've got this dip here in the hand, but yeah. So that's that's what I'm looking at, and so if I'm gonna do a uh, proper red line of it, I would make sure that that is more a part of the palm. Um, and then you know what this this again can be kind of a stylistic choice here, um, but we got to make sure that there's that there's some consistency here. So here we've got the the uh, the kind of pads on the thumb. And the fingers, and uh, and then as opposed to these individual individual fingers, we don't have any of those pads at all. So again, if this is a stylistic thing, make sure you're going one way or the other. If you're going to include uh, an eminence on one point, include it on the others. Or if you've decided that you're not going to do that erase it from your other points to bring some uh, some consistency into it as far as proportions go uh, it looks it looks roughly correct uh, lengthwise uh, could probably stand to be a little bit wider maybe as far as the hand goes but uh, but yeah anyway um, hope that helps so like yeah, and, and the way that that's going, it's looking like they're not rotating the hand that much. You've got it up there. I like that you're kind of trying to go for some um, asymmetry in posing in, uh, in how the palms are rotated and how they appear. But yeah, it's important to, 
to get in reference and to know exactly how things look there. Um, this is looking uh, like it's supposed to be a female form, but um, one of the things that you've done here, uh, uh, I guess this is supposed to be kind of like a shrugging motion, which is fine, um, but the angle of the shoulders here is a bit sharp for a feminine form. You can still get that, uh, you can still get a, 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 a kind of shrugging a kind of shrugging emotion here, uh, or a body language here. But I would round off those shoulders just a bit to help kind of sell the feminineness of, of the character, if that's what you're going for. And kind of similar, um, that that makes it look kind of uh, manly or mannish is like a, uh, a really well-defined jawline. <laughs> that's more of a masculine trait. And you know, that, and again, if you want that to be a little bit more feminine, you could soften that up quite a bit and round it out quite a bit. And you'll you'll want to experiment with this some, but as you as you get more experience with like um, delineating masculine and feminine forms, uh, feminine forms typically have a uh, uh, a smaller cheek, so you can kind of help sell the feminineness that way. Uh, yeah. And you can still go for this, like, cartoony shape, but if you just soften the features up, it can, it can look a lot more, uh, clearly feminine or, or clearly masculine, depending on what angle that you want to approach it from. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. Because you can be whatever. Uh, as far as for the top of the head here, the hairstyle or whatever comes across as, like, pretty flat. There's not a whole lot of curve there. And what I'd presume is that this character has kind of a dome-shaped he head. And if the hair is going to have volume on top of that, it would typically follow the curvature of that. And so it would be a bit different. I would curve that just a bit more to kind of sell the, the roundness of the head. And you can still have the the ears or whatnot. That can be totally fine. Uh, this thin neck, uh, again, pretty feminine. Uh, you do want to watch exactly how many lines you're adding, but that uh, the the line of the sternocleidomastoid uh, doesn't look too bad. Uh, looks like you've got uh, some kind of mess here, uh, uh, or rather leftovers from a bit here. You might have been trying to do like. Um, cleavage, and the cleavage wouldn't be quite so far up the chest. This is more like the pit of the ne neck area, where the uh, the collarbones would be. And so the collarbones go for... go through the entire top. And the, the collarbones are, are uh, where the, the humerus are muscles attach. So look at like the center of the spine here. But yeah. So, as far as the breasts, they might be a little, a little high. They typically hang more from this, uh, this uh, pit of the neck area. So, what you'll have is you'll have. Uh, let me let me draw it from like a front-on perspective. If you're drawing a neck, and you're getting like the, uh, the lines of the sternocleidomastoid which are these, which is that kind of V-shape that you can see. That V-shape connects to the top of the, um, is that the entire sternum. So you've got, you've got the, your, your V-shape will basically be pointing into where the sternum is. And this area is, is what I call the pit of the neck. That's a, that might be more of a, where I learned it from term or from Bern Hogarth, but and then from there the sterno, uh, excuse me, the uh, the clavicles or the shoulder bones make kind of a coat hanger shape. So like they go in that way, and they look. And if you you can imagine it as like kind of an upside down coat hanger, if you like. 
but yeah. So there's the pit of the neck. And then from that point, at approximately kind of like a, a turned 45 degree angle, is where you'll find uh, the, the breast uh, tissue and the nipples hanging out. Um, but yeah. So, and if they're held up, they'll be like kind of pushed and scrunched together, like if the if the if they're wearing a bra or something like that. Uh, whereas they'll kind of fall out into the sides if they're not. It looks like that's the effect that you're trying to go for there. But anyway, all right. I've uh, I've spent a long time on that. Um, on this uh, on this other one here, you've got. Uh, You've got an upside down figure, and so I'm going to I'm going to rotate that a bit so I can see it a little clear. Whoops. Da, da. Okay. Whoops. Yeah. No, no, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. Well, whatever. Um, kind of, kind of similar things going on here. Um, you've got the the pads and uh, where they've they've got their hands kind of curled in that shape. That uh, that will uh, make those more eminent. And so I think for style and consistency, you'll want to kind of practice your hand and where you're going to place these. Uh, the the pads and the and the finger segments so to speak you know there are three segments so just get in some more hand practice and and that will look a, a little bit better okay and how we're bending this character uh, the the chest is one big solid piece right and it looks like the upper part of the chest is uh, is sagging over the lower part uh, which is not really uh, what would happen. Um, so in in construction, uh, the the chest would be kind of like lowered like this, but it's all one big solid piece, right? Uh, and the spine's going to go through somewhat like there, uh, and the waist is going to follow through somewhat right there. Maybe I'm drawing it a bit high on this character. You'll have to forgive me. I'm kind of out of practice here, but. Uh, In this case, we've got the entire torso leaning forward, and so we'll bring everything a bit further down on the character because they're leaning forward. And we're also going to see more of the uh, the top uh, rather than the underside of the neck here. So you might get even less of that area. But yeah. And it looks like you got like the arms raised too. But yeah, all right. I've spent enough time on this particular one, so we are going to reset the rotation. Whoops. Eh. No, that's that. Oh, whoops. No. Stop that. Oh wait, there we go. That's the button. All right, that's uh, I took a lot of time on that piece, so I'm gonna ho go ahead and move on to um, our next artist, Director 240, and uh, they included uh, a number of other pieces, uh, and uh, I'm going to oh I didn't stretch that one back out, but um, I'm going to do my best to uh, to mention all of the artists in the in the description, so but yeah. Oh, I have a lot more to see about like this comic stuff, but uh but I'll I'll come back to that maybe. But uh yeah. Good job. Good job. All right. Uh the next person who sent me stuff. Ulti Bahamut. And so I will go ahead and place the first piece that they that they sent to me. Yep, was that one. Alright, so I'll go ahead and turn these ones off. And 
And let me write out the name again. Uh, name. U L T I. All right. Cool. Uh, what I like here is we've got some uh, some nice perspective stuff going on, um, and we have two characters uh, kind of intertwined. Uh, and this is especially challenging because, like, you're you're drawing the figures interacting with figures. Um, you've got soft bodies colliding with soft bodies here, uh, and that's always uh, kind of a challenge. Um, let's let's see if I can if I can help out a little here. Um, one thing that I do notice immediately, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to shrink down the image some to really get this. Whoops, that one's still showing. To kind of show what's going on here. Uh, oh no, don't do this to me. All right. One thing I kind of noticed about the perspective here is it's rather extreme. So if I'm cutting through that area and I'm cutting through this area, yeah, we've got a we've got a a, a vanishing point uh, that is uh, very high up. So we're looking. So presumably we're looking uh, pretty far down. I'm using this third point here to kind of nail it down. So we got our vanishing point like up in this general uh, vicinity here, and we've got our characters uh, pretty close to it. Um, what? All right. Um, yeah. So the perspective point is uh, is a little close to the image, um, so that's that's resulting in this kind of um, uh, th this kind of warped lookingness thing here. Whenever you got something very close to its perspective point, things start to uh, warp and change. And then, so what I would recommend instead, uh, if I'm going to, let me go ahead and uh, and lay down a, a perspective tool here. Uh, so, if I'm going to, well, actually let me not do the tool, I'm going to go back here, and I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Um, so instead, what I would do here uh, is place these points a little bit, uh, whoops, oh no, I've been doing this on the wrong thing, haven't I? Yep, okay. All right. Right. So something that um, you can do uh, to place the uh, perspective point further away um, is to uh, decrease the, the harshness of the angles. So did a bit of rotation there when I didn't mean to. So this um, this piece right this place right here seems to be kind of like a, a nice strong through line. So maybe you wanna maybe you wanna keep that. Uh, but decrease the angles from there kind of considerably and send it back a little bit further in space. And this could help reduce the the appearance of warping. That moves your, your perspective point considerably further away uh, and reduces the uh, the kind of warping effect that's going on there. So. Hopefully that's one thing that helps out a lot. 
because if you want this kind of warped per perspective kind of background to, to uh, say that things are like off or something like that, uh, we've got uh, you've you've got some fairly normal non distorted looking characters here. So I presume that that uh, that that might be more of a uh, more of the direction that you're going. So all right. So looking at the figures themselves, uh, we have. We have a big, we have a big kind of chest and torso area, so right here, uh, and then the pelvis area is going to be right about there. And so, since this is the top, going to be about there, as far as construction goes. And then these are forms, so we've got behind it. Um, looks like it's kind of being squished or or flattened. Uh, this this character, for instance, it doesn't look like they have a a full chest of their own. There's kind of a a conflict of space going out here. Uh, to use a 3D term, it looks like uh, the his his head and or their head and their chest is. Uh, kind of clipping through each other, and also looks like the angle of the of the skull. If we're going with the the horns of the dragon here, might be going through their neck. <laughs> These are all things that. Uh, so uh, I I wouldn't try and fix the the image. This image looks rather like finished. Um, I would just kind of keep this in mind for like future reference. Um, but just kind of be on the lookout for for uh, things like that. If you have, um, if you need the scene to contain two bodies interacting with each other, it's very important that they each kind of have their own space. So what I would do to to kind of fix that um, is I would move the character a bit. Uh, I might angle this guy's head a little bit differently. Like if I had to go back and construct it, I might. Uh, uh, aim it a little, a little bit differently, which would, which would move the entire head quite a bit. But uh, and then I might kind of, I might alter the way that this guy's head is going in there too. I would kind of straighten them up and and line them up uh, maybe a little bit better. I think there are there are ways to make this work, but those are those these are just a couple of things that I've noticed. So like otherwise, uh, I think your your proportions look pretty good, at least on this top character. Uh, on the back character, we've got got some confusion as to what exactly is going on. Let me reduce that. Okay, so we've got a character, and I'm not sure if this is supposed to be their shoulder. But yeah, when we've got uh, when we've got two characters, we need to uh, you need to try and make sure that they've got their own space, and so like one looks quite smaller than the other, um, and. I'm not sure where their pelvis would go. To so one of the one of the things that makes me unsure of that. Um, let me turn this back up. So we've got a cross line, right? Whoops. Okay. Let me turn this back up. So we've got a corner of the couch heading out this way, right? And it looks like his chest is pretty much in perspective with that. Uh, so like if we were if we were cutting like a line across. It looks to it, it looks to me that this character would fit on this couch uh, just alone, um, and including this extra character would maybe tilt them tilt them up a bit more. But yeah, this is very difficult. A lot of planning has to go into these uh, these two character pieces. It takes a lot of practice to get that down. Uh, but yeah, you have to maintain a sense of space. For both of them, and so you've got both of their heads, both of their chests, both of their pelvic regions. It's 
it does look like you're trying to account for spaces, at least for their uh, for their legs. But yeah, it looks like again like the the chest here is clipping through the pelvis there. But yeah. Not too bad an effort. I would just keep these those things in mind moving forward with future pieces. Alright. Thank you very much to Ulti Bahama. We'll go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, they had that one as well. Alright, the next person I received uh, stuff from was Zen Cumin. This is their this is everybody's Discord names. I think that's how you spell it. I'm I, and I apologize if I've like um, done any uh, if I've pronounced them wrong or anything like that. These are some really nice polished-looking pieces. Uh, I think that when it when it comes down to it. Um, there, there are a lot of people that would feel really good about uh, putting out stuff like this. Really, at, uh, at a level of this development, there's only nitpicks left to be had. Um, so, one big example that, that pops out to me uh, is that the, it looks like the perspective of this, uh, of this weapon looks a little... Something about that looks a little bit off to me. So, like, it's coming through her hand at an angle, but it's impacting kind of right by, right behind their foot here. And sorry, I might, if I read the wrong genders into your, uh, into your character drawings here, big apologies. I just kind of do that. Um, but yeah. So we've got that coming in back here. And then the perspective of the character. If I had to try and put them in a box. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. It looks like this uh, bit is coming forward. Uh, because you've had you've drawn out the... Uh, this is coming forward. It looks like her hand uh, is... Uh, coming coming forward of uh, their hand is coming forward of their body uh, and then the sword is uh, ending up in back of them that would be a rather extreme uh, angle to do for the hand to come forward and for the sword to land backward that would be a rather uh, kind of extreme angle so I would I would revisit that Or uh, or maybe do something with the sword if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to fix this image. Again, I suggest. Uh, again, this is this image is to a level of polish where I wouldn't recommend doing anything like that. And like I said, uh, uh, there would be many people that would be perfectly fine uh, publishing something like this, probably. But yeah, so need to watch out for for stuff like that that doesn't appear quite right. Um, so yeah, we've got to to wrap up to to simplify it. Uh, this appears to be heading forward, this appears to be heading backward, uh, and when you've got forms uh, interacting like that, it's very important that, uh, that you make sure that, um, if you want the most polish anyway, um, that you, that we, that we see those, uh, those angles a little. Um, not that we see those angles, but that we uh, kind of work it out in construction where exactly things are going in space. So, otherwise, small things, um, a couple potential tangents, you know, we got right here almost touching, right here almost touching, right here touching, uh, right here kind of touching. You know, there are these, these are just, these are things that are really, really uh, difficult. Like here, we've got some confusion in the in the silhouette, hair as opposed to ear. These are all super nitpicky things. 
I just want to reiterate how good an image this really looks. This is like really, really nice and polished. Um, I think the other thing you might want to we we might want to, you might want to clarify it. So uh, we've got this uh, the shoulder line uh, with this one again towards us. Yeah, that's that's it. So that's it's all of this um, forward language of the of the arm, and then for the sword to be in back is just uh, it to me it appears from a perspective uh, to to be like kind of an impossible thing. It's kind of like the optical illusion where you got this uh, the the triangles. You probably know that optical illusion where like each one goes into the other in a way that's uh, technically impossible to build. Uh, I can't recreate it here, but you know the one that I'm talking about, hopefully. Look up a triangle illusion if you don't. Um, but yeah, to what's heading forward and what's heading backward, uh, to just kind of be a little bit more clear about that on this on this figure. Um, and kind of same on this one, to where we've got... their angles here and then they've got an arm kind of coming forward here kind of a squash chest, chest and hips area which is fine and then for the cloak to come entirely over that it's very skewed on that side so looks a little a little funky um, and then we've got tangent here uh, gotta make clear which which is in front the hand or the or the pants here. But yeah, those are the those are the main things that I see with that. Proportionally, this head looks a little big, but I can kind of look past that because we've got the same thing going on over there. So, but yeah, no. Otherwise, this uh this is a really this is a pretty good looking piece. Um. I would feel I would feel proud of this one. So, yeah. Good job. All right. We got uh we'll go ahead and move on to our next person who has submitted here. Uh That's more from them. I got some excellent this uh this is a very highly developed kind of kind of character. So that's really cool. From uh from Zen, Zen, Zen Cumin. I think. What was that one? Yes. Very nice stuff in general. Nice and polished. Alright. So here I believe is Skip Fox. Yeah. So we got some stuff from Skip Fox here. There, um, I'm the this this is the colored version, but the the image that they sent me was pretty small, and then this one is a little bit more high definition. So I'm going to be working with this one a bit, a bit more. All right, yeah. So I'll make sure that I'm on the correct layer. Let me make sure that I got skit fox eighteen. This is how they appear to me. All right, um, we got a number of things going on going on here. Uh, it is the um, I I am seeing that the the figure appropriately, but there are quite a number of like um, little imperfections that um that that kind of um make it make it maybe a little less uh realistic looking um which might not be your your intention but uh so one thing would be where this character is standing in space so we've got one foot kind of higher than the other and so if we're doing that 
we're kind of establishing a, a perspective that goes back into space however far which is fine um, but we need to make sure that the rest of the character matches up uh, with that with that perspective a bit and so if we're looking down at the feet and up here can be more straight on uh, but from that point we're going to be looking down at everything that's coming this way and then we're gonna start to be looking uh, up if it's uh, if the perspective point is quite close like that we can you can move it further away and, and uh, reduce the distortion uh, as I was saying about uh, an earlier piece proportions uh, they they look mostly okay on the uh, up to down uh, but on the on the width scale this character is quite quite skinny and lanky uh, which which you can do um, which you can do as a, as a design decision but there are a couple of things that that set it is off so we've got uh, a big kind of like um, if I've got the upper torso area the rib cage area uh, and then over down here we've got a pelvic area and the space between them is quite long and so if you're if you're uh, if you're studying about your own body and you kind of like uh, s sit up or stand up as, as straight as possible you can kind of fit uh, you can kind of touch the the bottom of your rib cage and the top of your uh, your pelvic region uh, with with the, with about one outstretched hand so the space between here and here is a is a little long that it stretches out the character a lot uh, and that uh, that has an effect on the on the arm length as well so if you try and be a little bit um, if you want to be a little bit more realistic you could squeeze that proportion down a bit more and so the uh, a, a bit more so you don't necessarily have to make sure it has those particular measurements but uh, but yeah and so this character has kind of the opposite problem of like our feminine character before this one is reading like a, a bit more masculine and whatever you want to do you've uh, you've kind of got the opposite problem if you want the the character looking like more masculine and badass you can um, broaden the shoulders a bit and angle them out so like kind of the opposite problem of uh, of feminizing or masculinizing or whatever so there's that uh, yeah whenever you're drawing like um, a firearm it's good to have a reference for what exactly that looks like how exactly it fits in the hand because firearms are one of those things with that like if you get it incorrect even if your character art is perfect it's gonna look a little wonky <laughs> let me proceed to wonk it out even further but yeah get a reference otherwise your firearms are gonna be looking quite weird uh, up here on the head looks like we've got a cranial region and then if I wanted to make a muzzle region it'd be out this way and so you want to be uh, right here this looks more turned to the side than it should be we should probably see more of the front of it and more of this uh, backside right there just a little bit more because otherwise it looks like it's turned a little too much to the side so that might be one way on how I how I fix it making sure that your eyes are spaced apart well uh, and that the ears show up on uh, consistent locations have to remember this is an ob this is a, a form in three dimensions and so if the ears 
are falling off one so if I'm drawing a, a circle around the the cranial spheroid kind of look here it's gonna be a little bit flatter and if I attach one ear here the other has to be attached closer to over here to be to be looking the most proper I think that ear could even move over just a tiny bit and, and look a little bit better. But yeah. Yeah, I think just the primary thing is that the torso is a bit long and it's throwing the proportions of the characters off, of the character off a bit. Otherwise, you know, continue trying to practice uh, proportions and uh, and uh, and perspective. Um, and you'll you'll get the hang of it, I think. So, good job, Skit. And then the colored version, yeah, the colored version has, uh, yeah, a lot a lot of the same kind of construction issues. But like, um, but the colors look good. Colors look good, and the character kind of stands out against this blue background. So yeah, not bad at all. Alright, that was Skip Fox. The next one who got me stuff was Zetsu Yoshi. Whoops, let me turn this off. And then they have some, uh, I think those are hiragana. <laughs> I have a very, very basic understanding of Japanese, but, uh, yeah. All right, so it looks like Satsuyoshi was trying to uh, do some studies uh, on on uh, different animals, uh, different uh from different perspectives and different uh, nozzle types. Um, and if you... So, the the aim of where you're going is... Um, the aim of where you're going is important here, and I can't quite see where it is. Because if it's... Repli it, I don't think that you no wanted to replicate it, uh, because they're not... They're, they're not quite replicated uh, you know if you wanted to go in the image specifically itself uh, and kind of, and try and do like a, what I would suggest if you wanted to replicate it would be to go in the image and kind of draw a grid and then just kind of break down the individual elements from that grid and you could you could either trace it or or uh, or just try and replicate it. I would encourage trying to replicate it. Um, but if you are tracing, just kind of be mindful of like where exactly you're placing things. So like, if you're if you're going to do them in order, I might suggest that you do like uh, maybe do a tracing first, just just to kind of get some preliminary stuff going on, and then recreate the grid, and then try and re redo that. Uh, that can be a little more that can give you a little more success in uh, replicating an image. Um, it does look here you are trying to go more anthro, and it looks like you're putting the... Uh, it's a very, very circular type of looking base of, of the skull here. And that can be a great place to, to start from. Um, but the skull shapes are obviously different from you know any any particular circles so looking at these at these images what am i seeing in common in every single one of these images you've got all of the eyes facing forward you've got the eyes facing forward here forward here and forward here even though you're trying to get uh, the muzzles uh, and so forth at a at an angle uh, on these two specifically uh, on this one it 
it seems to work, but um, the the difference is we've got the uh, we've got the dog here, the German Shepherd, and then we've got the wolf here, which are predators. Uh, and then on the prey animals, they tend to have their eyes a little bit uh, wider wider spaced. Um, this this can be a a, a stylistic choice to uh, make it make it more humanoid, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah. It's just something to to keep in mind as far as for like if you wanted to like replicate them for a study, which I would suggest doing because that that helps tie what you're seeing closer to what you what you end up drawing, and so it can help you uh, uh, it can stretch your imagination in in that way to to make your uh, your anthro drawings more successful. So, but like. And then another thing I've noticed that with like the wolf here and the dog here, you've kind of replicated this uh, kind of dome-ish looking muzzle shape, uh, which doesn't quite work uh, for dogs and wolves. Something like that would work more uh, on like a either a reptilian-like. You know, if I if I went over your image. Like, uh, like that. I could say that this was, this was a dinosaur, you know? <laughs> so it's really important the type of, uh, the type of shape that you, that you make things. So if you're trying to replicate the dog, the nose is the, is a point almost, right? And so you want to replicate that as a point that the muzzle is going out to. So if you kind of sharpen up that that nose a bit, like just doing that, I think gets you more of the shape that you're looking for. And then as far as the the mouth being open, I think the, that's that's what makes me think you're 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 trying to replicate this a bit. And so if you've got this this turned, uh, it ends up looking that the the jaw sticks forward from it a little bit. But that's not that's not really the case. The the jaw is going down and it's getting uh, behind it. And so even though they look uh, like it's protruding a bit here, uh, in it, uh, in reality it's going a bit a bit back. Uh, and and you're choosing two different angles here, right? From here you're more on a, like a side, and then from here it's more of an uh, upper. So you got two different angles that you're working with here, and so you've got uh, this German Shepherd's eyes are going to be looking a bit more up because its skull's looking a bit more up, whereas this particular angle skull's looking down because the because of the way that uh, that you've drawn the the muzzle out there. But yeah, and then also um, being conscious of uh, of where exactly your skull, where exactly the the primary dome of the skull is. Right, you're trying to draw the form. You're not trying to. You're trying to draw the form of a skull using a ball as a starting point. Uh, skulls do not actually look like balls. Right, and so there's going to have some form, and if you want the ears to be a specific shape, you can go off of that side and about that side. But yeah, and then there'll just be the differences between like dogs and wolves in general. So like, it looks like this wolf has kind of like a bulgy forehead, <laughs> but yeah. If I was going to fix that, I would try and remove. We're trying to trying to see where the primary your most your most well-defined spot is this kind of like uh muzzle shape. And so going off of that, I would place the skull more back there than up front here. 
and then if I'm drawing in construction lines to get exactly where my eyes should be I'm going to come in up here would be where we bisect it down the center of the form and then we've got an eye here and an eye here and then we can we can bulk that out a little bit if we like because we can build in kind of a a brow ridge and then um, kind of a similar thing with this with this last if we kind of sharpen up the muzzle a bit we can maybe get more of that wolfish look that you're going for making sure the ears are connected at the sides of the head and up at the top not just up at the top but yeah if you're trying to go them going backwards that's fine too I have to go that way and that way help sell that a bit more all right um I hope that helps at least a little bit so if uh, if I would I would highly suggest trying to do um, replications first before um, before venturing out into uh, doing anthro work do whatever's fun for you of course if this is fun to you keep on doing it um, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to polish them up and make them look a, a little more, uh, a little more real, a little more uh, uh, humanoid, relatable, uh, to where things are fitting in perspective and look, up, uh, and are at least approximating the forms uh, accurately, I would try to replicate them first. So, my suggestions uh, specifically would be um, using that uh, that grid and then tracing and then trying to replicate and then what you're really trying to understand is like draw what you're seeing as opposed to what you think is out there uh, because that can help you uh, angle these eyes and uh, and ears more effectively and give you a sense of how th symmetrical forms appear in space so that's a uh, that's more of a uh, of a place in perspective as well and you can practice that as well um, there are courses on like Drawbox and the like, but uh, but yeah, all right. Um, let's see here. I'm going to pull up. There might have been some questions, and I apologize if I have not met those adequately. All right, cool. Making them in new angles. Yeah, animation, cartoony style. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe then the next time that I do this, um, I should um, emphasize um, more about like, hey, what what exactly were you going for? But uh, but yeah, all right. Um, I have gone ahead and eaten up an hour or most of an hour. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Um, unless there are any more uh, questions that anyone has, I'll stick around for a minute. Got to drink some water. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'll go ahead and wrap this stream up. Uh, again, I encourage uh, all the artists to um, to uh, to do their best. I'll I'll do what I can to break this up and make sure that it gets uh, that it gets timestamps on YouTube and so forth. But yeah, all right. With that, I'll go ahead and wrap up the stream. Thank you for uh, for those of you who came uh, and uh, and participating. Uh, I will, and uh, for those of you on the YouTube artist. Uh, you, on the YouTube side, do the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe if you like it. And uh, I will see you all. I will see you all on the Discord. Uh, feel free to tag me at any time, or, or comment, or, or anything like that. All right, that wraps up this video. Uh, ending recording.